the beginning of faith in the Creator is to believe in yourself. And that's a very, very challenging, it's a very, very deep process of finding yourself, knowing in who you need to believe, what does it mean. It's not easy to believe in yourself because there are many different kinds of power that are working in a very, very, very violent and cruel way against the gentle voice of our souls. A person that wants to believe in himself, that really wants to find his inner connection to the truth, to the Creator, to the source of life, is coming from a very honest and naive place. He really, really wants it. He loves Hashem, he cares about people, he wants to be kind, he wants to be generous, he wants to smile, to be happy. He's so gentle and delicate and his will is so innocent and pure. <laughs> And he finds himself struggling with such evil powers of darkness, such shames and insulting difficulties, challenges that cannot be described in words. And people that are so humble and so nice and so fragile and coming from such good places with pure intentions, with holy will and finding themselves being crushed by cruel people, by horrible methods, violent demolishing systems that been been, been created to, to destroy the, the freedom of, of, of those gentle souls, standing as an individual against all of that evil, all of that thick darkness, it's a big challenge, it's not easy. But the truth is a witness to itself and inside your physical body the soul is keep on shining from within and no matter what you go through in life, you must admit that this flame surprise su su how do you say that surprise it surprise surprisingly. surprisingly I lost the G somewhere <laughs> surprisingly is still shining still giving its singles bringing air sounds from inside somehow from within you still find yourself that you have hope against all chances, against all odds, against all darkness. You're not in the best shape anymore, you're not in the same age anymore, you don't have the same amount of money, not the same support, not the same connections and you're holding on somehow. You're not the same person that you were, you're not standing in the same place, in the same position. You don't have the same power, same strength that you had before, but somehow you're facing and crossing challenges and difficulties that even a young kid is not able to deal with. And you're making it somehow. And again and again this thing happens and waking us up to understand how great and powerful the power of the soul is. So it's true that the soul is gentle and it's clear and it's almost it's not physical you you barely can sense it you barely can can understand it but all of the purpose and the reason for our life is based on that fact that we have that soul and the soul is shining 
with such amazing colors and shades and we must learn how to use it and how to enjoy the qualities that God, the creator of the universe, gave us as individuals. Because while trying to serve the creator, we're finding ourselves as individuals, as small tiny flames, candles of the creator, facing huge, huge clouds, fog and darkness, evil powers, but we're not willing to surrender. And when you're not willing to surrender, it means you still have hope. And if you still have hope, it means that you're basing your hope on something. If now I'm going to bring some plastic box, some, some plastic bottle, and I'm going to tell you, here, make a phone call. You're not going to believe. Why? because it doesn't have the shape of a cellular or of a phone. So you won't try even. It's a box, it's a bottle. Huh? How can I talk? But 200 years ago, if you would bring a mobile, a cellular to someone and you would tell him, here, speak with your mother, he wouldn't buy it as well. Why? Because it's not familiar for him. Exactly like the, this bottle today for you, is not connected to that concept of holding a phone, a way of communication. So I'm telling you that the power of your soul is so strong, but you're finding it hard to use it because it's not familiar to you, not because it's not available. And the power of the soul is so much more strong and great than the power of the physical world. And when you look at the world, the world is fantastic. You can buy a new MacBook and to make wonders with it. You can illustrate, you can compose music, you can edit videos, you can make things that will change the world. You can break into the Pentagon computer if you're willing to. You can make amazing things. But only if you understand the power of that tool. Only if you understand how it works and what's the capabilities of that device. Only if you have faith in your own wisdom, in your own power, and in the power of those tools that you receive, that you hold, that you own. Now you can achieve amazing things with it. The main test is to believe in the existence of your soul. And then you'll experience and see wonders. But before you're aware to your soul, before you know who you are, before you're aware to the power of the spiritual side of your creation, you can't move. You can't function. Even if you will try to learn Torah, even if you will try to pray with the right intention, even if you will try to go to the Holy Land, even if you will try to, 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 to go and to be blessed by righteous people, you can find yourself coming back empty-handed after doing amazing things, after learning hours on hours, after praying for years on some things, after going to the Jerusalem, crying in the Western Wall, and going back to your own environment, to your own house, disappointed and empty-handed and weak and tired and confused and lost. And going and visiting graves of righteous people and being blessed by huge Admorim and big fantastic rabbis and known Mekubalim and whatever. Supporting and giving thousands of dollars for charity and doing Pidyon Nefesh, redeemed your soul with charity. and finding yourself disappointed again and again, confused and lost. After putting many years on that, putting so much power of thought and dedication and, and, and tears and sweat and blood. And when you check and when you look back, you came back empty. You didn't find yourself at all. You lost a lot of the powers that you came with. How come? 
How can it be that a person will walk in the path that seems to be the right one, that all of the righteous people are testifying that that's the right way, and everyone are recommending to do, and those advice worked for so many other people, but for you it never worked. How come? People can talk to you about how important it is to live in cold weather. But you know yourself that you're getting sick in a minute. Another person will tell you that the best thing for you is to live in the warm weather. And you will go over there and you're going to sweat like crazy and you feel that you not belong there. It helped one person and it destroyed the second. You can eat healthy food and it can destroy you. And you can eat junk and to be strong as a bull. Every person is a unit, is an individual, is a unique creation, handmade by the Creator. And you have your unique qualities and you must connect yourself to that, to your true self, not to who that other people told you that you are. Not to follow advice of other people that are telling you about their life stories and you're going to try to imitate them and you're going to find yourself lost in their path. They are righteous and they achieved amazing things only because that they followed the advice that was right for them. But if you will follow the same advice, it doesn't mean that it will be the right advice for you. Because you are different in 99% of your being from your best friend. And you must find your true self. And the problem is not to find yourself. The difficulty, the problem is to believe in that real self that you will find that it's holy, that it's great, that it's fantastic, that you're amazing. That you're a hand made of the creator of the universe. The one that created those fantastic clouds and the amazing beaches and seas and sunsets and sunrise and the star systems and everything, all the music and all the animals, all the flowers, all the trees. That creator created you, illustrated, painted, and built you in 100%. You never created yourself. You didn't change anything in who that Hashem made you. All of your life experience is the supervision that God supervised on you. People that you met, places that you went to, situations that took place in your life, all of those things that happened to you being supervised specially for you by the one that moves the world, by the one that puts thoughts in the hearts and in the minds of people, that he drives people from one city to the other, makes people move apartments and to be your neighbors, put ideas in the hearts of other people to talk to you, to communi communicate with a person like you. Suddenly they're going to have an idea, somehow they're going to think that you're the right one to do something. It can be good, it can be hard. But it's not coming to the world from the individuals, from the people. It's coming and revealing itself to the world by the hand of the Almighty, of the one that is supervising on the creation. Your life is a result of the will of the King of all kings. You are who that you are. Because He made you to be who that you are. He gave you an individual unique soul. He sent that soul to get into a body that had been created by your parents. That He created them and their life story from their parents, from their hometown, from their communities. And it's going back to the beginning of creation and even to before time to the ancient time of Kedem, to that time of before creation, before time being created from eternity. That's where it all started. 
And that's your real true nature. That is the nature of your divine soul. But you're trapped in your own body, in a very limited physical body. That is limited only if you put your mind and your focus on its shape, and on its weight, and on its size, and measure. But when you set your mind to look into the nature of your spiritual soul, you will find your connection to springs of wisdom and ancient wisdom, endless amount of abilities and power to move things in the world in the power of your thoughts, to heal people with your eyesight, to pray and to be answered on everything that you wish to achieve and to bring down bounty that will change the face of the universe and it will take place and it will happen. It will happen by those people that will believe in themselves all the way. It will not going to happen by people that will lack that faith. It cannot. You must believe that the Creator lives inside of you, like that many verses are saying. That the Shekhinah the power of Hashem, the power of the Creator that He sent down to this universe lives inside of us. I live inside of you. From the days of the first temple, the Shekhinah went down to this world and found its home inside of us. That's your soul. You are part of the Shekhinah Kedosha. And when you became part with something that is endless, so you don't have no limitations. The only trigger here is to believe that you are beyond the limitations of this world. And to ba break through all of those constrictions, all of those coverings, by the power of your will, by the power of your soul. And the thing that moves your soul is the will, the holy will, the holy desire to achieve things, to experience things. And you must follow that light, the light that comes from within. The light of your soul is a positive light, is good thoughts, positive emotions of hope, of happiness, of gratitude, of appreciation. All the good attributes of a person are coming from the light of his soul. And that's who you really want to be. Just that you're afraid to set it free. You're afraid to express your emotions because you're afraid to be hurt again. You're afraid to express your thoughts and your opinion because you don't want to be ashamed and destroyed by others. You're afraid. And because that you follow your fears, you're limiting yourself to the advice of other people and to the opinion of other people and to what that other people will tell you and what that they are afraid of. And you're limiting and limiting yourself until you find yourself with no breath, with no hope, with no dreams. Gave up on your hopes, on your dreams. Gave up on yourself. And that's the worst sin of them all. Because to give up on yourself, it's to give up on that letter that the Creator gave you. It's to block that channel that God provided you to enjoy from His spiritual bounty. If you're not going to give up, if you're going to scream from your heart, if you're going to be just honest, just say the truth, you will find that inner connection to infinity. You will find that hope, that lifeline that will tie you and will bond you forever with the King of all Kings. 
all your prayers will be answered. The person that now stands in front of you is talking to you from a broken heart. Talking to you after having a long, long life experience in walking in that path of trying to find the real truth. Not trying to succeed, not trying to be known, not trying to be honorable, to honored. Ready to be humiliated, ready to hear the rebuke from the tiniest person in the universe, from animals, from the creation. If you would know with how many difficulties and challenges I'm dealing with on a daily basis, amounts of rebukes, waves after waves, like the, the number of waves that the ocean contains, I think. I don't know that for sure. That's how it feels like. Every moment. And what gives me the power, the motivation to continue? The fact that I know that the Creator rebukes the one that He loves. And I'm receiving those rebukes like compliments. Like the best lesson that I could ever dreamed of. And it's true. Because after I'm surrendering myself and I'm listening to that rebuke, I'm realizing that what that I heard was the clearest, most purest truth of them all. That I received the wisdom from heaven. That I've been gifted now from heaven to hear the wisdom of the Creator by listening to the voice of my own heart. Not ignoring my emotions, not ignoring my feelings. If now my wife told me something, if now my friend told me something, if now my child, my tiniest child came and told me something, I'm not going to ignore the feeling that I had when I heard him, when I heard him. When she told me something, I'm not going to think to myself, what that she said right now can stop me from achieving what that I want. And no. I'm going to try to listen to the wisdom that is hidden between the lines. Why she said that? What is hidden? What is the highest and most amazing message that the Creator now is sending? through that amazing person. And that makes you to be a vessel to contain the bounty of Hashem. And not only a software that can contain the amazing memory and quotes that you heard in your life. I have a friend and a student in Israel. He told me, listen, between you and me, I learned much more Torah than you. I know all of the Gemarot that you're talking about. All of the quotes that you're quoting, I know them by heart. But I can never compose a class like you. Why? Why is it happening? He asked me. And I'll tell you. My wife once told me, you know much more Torah than the Torah that you learned. I learned a lot of Torah, I think. At least it took me many, many hours. Many, many years of my life I sat and learned Torah in Beit Midrash, in the house, and in the evenings, at nights, late at night, before praying in the morning, after doing this, hours and hours, thousands of hours of Torah, I think, I guess. But my wife told me, you know much more Torah than the Torah that you learned. And I'll tell you the truth, in the last five years that I'm traveling, that I'm teaching, I barely have time to learn. For sure I'm not learning hours every day, like I used to. And I have days that I can barely open a book. But today I learn much, much more than 12 years ago, than 15 years ago. Because today I'm learning every second of my life. Because my will is aimed to that. Because my desire is to learn. So I'm receiving from every person, from every situation, 
from every rebuke. And I love the rebuke because it builds me. It's educating me. It makes me to be a human being. I'm much more sensitive than I was before. I care much more than I cared before. I love much more than I loved before. I feel much more. I can see much more. I can recognize much more. Only because that I'm following my inner will that is so good and so pure, and I'm not ignoring it. If my friend or my wife or someone will tell me something, even if that thing won't be so pleasant, I will learn from that thing and I will not reject it. Why? Because I'm not going to ignore the feeling that what that she said was right. That what that he said came from an honest place. Even if it's going to destroy my day. Even if it's going to ruin my plans. If I will feel that that person was honest telling me what that he said, I will follow that person forever. I will listen to his words in the deepest way that I'll be able to. But if I will feel that that person, even though that he's a well-known rabbi, very famous and important and known and I don't know what, he will tell me something and I will feel that's not for me. That rebuke or that lesson is not building me. It's not right for me. I'm not going to follow that person even for one step. I'm going to respect him and going to walk away. In the speed of light, I'm going to disappear from his presence. Because I'm not going to ignore the feelings that I have inside. Because the Creator is talking to me through my soul. Using my soul, He's calling me from inside to listen to Him. And ignoring my soul is ignoring the voice of the universe, the voice of the Creator. The Creator is talking through the nature, through the trees, through the clouds, through the birds and all kinds of animals, all people. All of the faces are building, composing together the face of the Creator. All the sunsets and sunrise are showing to you the light of heaven in a different shade, in another color, in another aspect, in a new way. When your eyes are open and your heart is open, you can see the Creator, you can see the face of heaven while being trapped in this physical world and being set free from the chains of physicality even while being inside your own body. That vehicle can become a holy chariot that rises you and takes you up to places in heaven that no eye ever saw before that no righteous man ever experienced before. That's why when I hear that people are talking bad things about me behind my back, I don't care about that. I don't even spend a moment. A person sent me a link a few days ago on a certain rabbi that said bad things about me. I didn't even open that link to hear what he had to say. Who cares? Like, who cares? He's trapped. He's trapped. He's suffering. He's going through things with his own life and he found that purpose in life now to go and talk about me. Great. Congratulations. A new purpose in his life now. Who cares? Even now I'm wasting time talking about that with you. Instead of talking about the real potential real purpose of our life is to connect ourselves to the Creator 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Every moment of your life to connect yourself to infinity. It depends in your will. 
It depends on the purest will that you have inside. Don't ignore it. Be who that you are. Don't be afraid to be hurt. They can hurt your car. They cannot hurt your soul. They can talk to you, but you don't have to listen. They can talk about you, but you don't have to take it. You can be who that you are. You can be an individual. No matter where you are, no matter how much money you have, no matter how many friends you have, you can connect yourself and to serve the Creator in the most perfect and unique and beautiful, gorgeous and amazing way that only you can. Because He gave you unique nature, unique qualities and power that He never shared with no one else before. And when you develop that self-awareness to who that you are, you can start using those tools. You can start become that person that you are. But if you ignore those voices, if you're hating yourself and blaming yourself and fighting with yourself and rebuking yourself and, and, and slaughtering yourself 24 hours a day, how am I look, how I look, how I sound, what they think, what he said, what they said, what happened, what have I done, what gonna be. All of those foreign thoughts are thoughts that trapped in fears under those coverings of physicality. When you gonna focus in the nature of your creation, being a spiritual being, you will be set free completely from the chains of physicality. You're going to be a sparrow. You're going to be a free soul that can go up to heaven and down to this universe without being damaged and hurt at all. You can find true happiness. Happiness that grows and comes, reveal itself to the world from within. You need to look for that. The answers will come to you from your inside, not from outside. You learn the book. You heard the class, it's an external wisdom, the holiest book. You need to listen to your thoughts while reading. You need to be aware to your own emotions, to your senses, to the voice of your soul while reading or learning or finding, experiencing life in a spiritual way from inside. Don't read that book. Leave that book. Live. Live your life while reading that book. Take out the pearls of wisdom that connects to your soul, not to the author of that book. He's amazing or not amazing. I woke up to do Chuva from Hollywood movies. I'm saying the truth. Hollywood movies woke me up big time. Why? Because of the righteousness of the authors of those <laughs> scripts, those stories, because of the amazing actors that, that, no. Because I had lost sparks in those situations that had been brought up by those people. And the Creator made me see that movie in the exact moment that I needed to see that development and that scene and that argument and that situation and to hear that song. It's not such an awesome song. It was just the right words wrapped in the right tune in the right moment in my life. Handmade by the Creator. So don't ignore that. And then you will experience life. And you will live eternal life. Eternal life. Even in the physical body. You will enjoy life in the side of the Creator. Living your life with the Creator. Spending every moment of your life with the Creator. If you're up and if you're down. If you're sober and if you're drunk. If you're wealthy and if you're poor. If you're married and if you're not. If you're separated. If you have children and if you don't. If you learn a lot of Torah or if you haven't. All of that is not important when you're connected to the source of life. But when you separate 
yourself from your inner source, so then physicality starts to take place. Oh, but I'm alone. Oh, but I'm not learning. Oh, but I don't have money. Oh, oh, oh. You can spend your life in the lowest place in the universe and the Creator will illuminate for you that darkness in the most beautiful lights of them all. And you will learn and you will progress and you will rise and you will achieve new dimensions, new places that no one ever experienced before of you. But for that, you must not ignore your inner voice must unlock your true potential, must come back to who that you really are, a holy soul that's sent, been sent from heaven with a mission down to this world. To do your mission and to accomplish, it's to be who that you are. You've been sent to be who that you are. That's it. Hashem made you come here, so just be, be who that you are, be honest, be nice, be gentle, with your sense of humor, with your life wisdom, with your life experience, with who that you are, just let it be. And now we'll sing, let it be, let it be, let it be, let it be. Thank you very much, I appreciate your presence. Thank you this world in this period of time we have a mission what's the mission the mission is only not to forget the creator to remember that it's all he never to fall in the trap of all of those coverings of all of those husks, husks.